first. New federal law and orders coming out in bits and pieces through some backbencher bills that have some interesting ideas. The latest private member's crime bill would dramatically boost sentences for murderers linked to kidnapping and rapes. It has the enthusiastic backing of the majority conservatives, so it's guaranteed to become law. The new legislation was sponsored by Manitoba Conservative MP James Bazan. He joins us from Winnipeg, and we're standing by to bring in NDP critic Wong Mai from Montreal. We'll get to him as soon as we can. James, if you could first give me a sense of what sort of crime and what sort of time are you proposing that's different from the existing criminal code? Well, Don, what I've done is uh, brought forward a private member's bill that um, really responds to uh, my discussion with uh, victims, uh, families who have had to live through unnecessary parole board hearings of the worst criminals that we have here in Canada. Uh, we're talking about the Paul Bernardos, the Clifford Olsons, the Robert Pictons of the world. Uh, those that go out and abduct and kidnap our, our children and our innocent, and then they go and sexually assault them and um, ultimately murder uh, their victim. So what we're trying to do is, is uh, increase the parole and eligibility from 25 years up to a max of 40 years. And this will be done at the discretion of the courts. So the juries on a recommendation to the judge or the judge all on their own can make the decision that they uh, want to impose a penalty of more than 25 years without parole on a life sentence uh, up to a maximum of 40. Uh, this is uh, really what we've done is, is a, a pile of research into what happens to uh, the Clifford Olsons of the world and what we find is that they don't get released that they stay behind bars and so these parole board hearings that they can start applying for when uh, the Fain Hope Clause was still in place that they could apply at year 15 then at year 23 of their life sentence they get to start applying for parole every two years from there on in and so by increasing the eligibility period up to 40 years you'd remove eight uh, unnecessary parole board hearings and it would save the families of having to relive all of the right. um, agony, uh, going through all the heartache and reliving the uh, terrorizing events that happened to their loved ones. Okay, so I want to get straight on this. This doesn't necessarily extend the sentence. Most of these guys are in jail for the rest of their life anyway. What it does is remove uh, that sort of hope where they can go forward to a parole board, even if they probably never had it in the first place. That sort of ritual is not going to go ahead anymore. Is that the idea? That's the idea, is that it takes away their ability to re-victimize the families. And Clifford Olson is case in point, is that before he uh, would apply for parole, he would be sending letters to the families of the victims. Uh, he would be talking to the media and the press and, and uh, you know, in, in written statements, talking about how he murdered uh, his, his victims. And so when you're talking about, you know, the Sharon Rosenfelds, uh, uh, who had to live through this with her husband, Gary, uh, and, you know, be told over and over again how their son, Darren, was, was uh, you know, tormented and tortured and sexually assaulted and then finally killed by Olson. You know, those depraved individuals then use the parole board hearings as a way to toy and torment the family. And so I want to put an end to that, and that's what this bill is all about. And we, we see right. it over uh, as well. Right now we have David uh, uh, Dobson, uh, David James Dobson, who, who's doing the, the exact same thing, is that uh, he'll, make, he'll say that he's getting prepared to make a parole hearing. And then just a month before the parole hearing is supposed to take place, he pulls back and says, I'll do it next year. And so he keeps okay. getting well, the families ramped up to having to go toward the parole board hearings, but then never actually sits at the table to be denied. All right, James, I just want to bring in uh, Wang Mai. He's in Montreal. He's the NDP deputy critic uh, for justice. So why is the official opposition objecting to this, uh, Wang? What's, what's, uh, what's your concern? Well, the concern is that the bill is ineffective. Um, and, and I totally understand where the bill is com coming from, where Mr. Bazan is coming from. I mean, in terms of victims and having to go through all that, we understand that that must be really a hell. But the problem is with this bill is that it doesn't address this issue really in terms of how it goes forward. Uh, if Mr. Bazan really wanted to help the families, uh, the victims, he, sh he should have looked at the uh, parole process, should have, should have supported families. In this case, what happened with this bill is that you have a bill that basically affects not the whole majority of victims uh, and, and families, but also the problem is is that it gives the, the right, uh, and, and there's no guarantee. So basically it's a, an empty promise because what happens at the end of the day, it's not even sure that the family will not have to go through the, the, the process of here going to the hearing uh, parole. And also 
Uh, there are some issues with respect to the charter, with respect to standard international uh, law. Uh, if you look at the uh, statute of the international court, well, the Rome statute for the international court, um, you know, it says that the maximum a uh, uh, year, 25 years, then after that you have to have a review process. So basically, we'll be going against what, uh, what the international law says. We'll, we might go against what the uh, Charter of Rights says. So it's not even guaranteed. Then after that, you have to go through the whole process of tr trying to fight in court. Uh, so again, what we, we do understand where, where Mr. Bazan is coming from. But what should have been done instead of having this bill is really go through the whole uh, uh, hearing process and making sure that the families have the support, that they, they don't have to go through what you know, Mr. Bazan have, uh, has been saying, having to, to go through the whole hearing process and, have, and being, I mean, uh, it's really hard to understand but, 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 how, how they go through all of that, but um, yeah, this but tool, one, this what, bill is not the right way to go. What family wants to go through that? It seems to be a no-brainer that you, you don't have to be putting families through reliving criminal acts with this guy trying to get out, uh, uh, you know, out of his sentence. Who's, what's the, how could he possibly be against that? Well, we're not against that. The, the fact is that this bill does not help on that front in, in terms of, you know, going against the charter, going against international standards. Uh, you know, the whole process after you will have to go to court just to have to make sure that you can actually, um, you know, not go through the, that process. So the the bill, it's it, it, it per se, is flawed. So that's why we're saying, if really we want to help the families, making sure that they don't, and we do agree that they shouldn't have to go through that. So the the, the tool would be better if we would support the the families, make them not go through the hearing process instead of having okay. a bill that basically promises them something but won't deliver. I'm almost out of time, James Kazan. I'd like your thoughts on that. Can I respond to that? Well, yes. you know, this is a flip-flop by the NDP. My bill is fashioned after C-48, which, which really increased uh, parole ineligibility on multiple murderers up to 50 years. So the NDP supported that bill. They're now completely reversing themselves on my bill, which is uh, even, in my opinion, just, just as uh, grievous crimes as what we saw in, in Bill C-48 with, with multiple murders. Uh, so what we are doing, again, is giving discretionary power to the judges. He mentions the International Criminal Court and the Roman Statute. That's about international law, you know, war crimes. We're talking about uh, genocides. What we're talking about is Canadian law, respecting Canadian families that, that have had their, uh, their, their loved ones killed by the most brutal people in our society, and making sure that we can meet their needs. This bill does it. It's been getting the support of numerous organizations uh, uh, across Canada who have been advocating on behalf of uh, victims. And so this is the right approach. And we still, yeah, there, there's some in the existing system within the parole board we need to do more. But this is about future uh, going forward. Uh, C-48 passed the, uh, okay. the uh, charter challenge and so will this bill. Okay, let's see what happens. Thank you very much for both of you. Uh, appreciate the discussion. Coming up after the break,